People the world over are afraid of snakes. Some of them can kill you with a single bite. But the truth is, most of us don't actually know much when it comes to snakes. The deadly venomous ones, they don't chase people. With so many different types of snakes, there are many myths about them. Most of them are untrue. I was stopping him and he said, why? Those are devils. They need to be killed. Every time you find a snake, kill it on the head, otherwise it will bite you. So I said, no, I think they need their life. This week on Wildlife Warriors, join me as I meet Boniface Momanyi, who shows me that there's a lot more to snakes than meets the eye. Kenya is home to 126 different snake species, including some of the world's deadliest. Here on the coast of Kenya, in Watamu, this is Snake Central. We're here at the Biokin Center in Watamu and Boniface is in charge. He's just started the staff meeting and these are the reptile and snake scouts of Kenya. They started with a prayer because none of these guys want to be bitten by any of the snakes here. Some of them are deadly poisonous. Most snakes are incredibly shy and will do anything to avoid human contact. And as Boniface shows me, because of their camouflage, they are pretty hard to find. We want to see whether we can find a snake. And if you open your eyes, you may find one looking up on the trees, under the leaves. So that's actually the secrets of finding a snake. So you expect to find them like down in that yeah, hole over there? Yeah. So you must have to be looking so that we can see one. And Wait, is that one up there? Uh, no, that, that's a branch. Oh God, that's it a looks like a snake. Yeah. Okay, so what are we actually looking for? Mm, what up do, on the trees. I, how would I actually tell? You see, if you see a body of a snake, you can tell because they're shiny up on the trees. On the ground, we can see camouflage. That is absolutely a nice, nice puff adder. Oh my God, it's beautiful. Yeah. But it's terrifying looking, oh my God. Oh wow, how did you see that? I am used with bushes. Your, your eyes are really well yes. tuned. Oh my God. Okay, are you gonna catch it? Yeah, we'll okay, catch it, I'm, but I will. I'm gonna step back, because I don't wanna be near this thing when you catch it. It looks, I've heard they're really angry, aggressive snakes. Yeah, so you have to get a box to put it in. Okay. And I'm going to box. do the handling. Are you going to help me? No. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not with this one. Okay, go, boy. Let tell your box for that.
Oh my God. You see that venom? Oh my God. This is unbelievable, Boniface. Aren't you scared? Not scared. I must be um, absolutely keen on what I'm doing because it's a dangerous snake. You must be absolutely perfect on what you're doing. So you see the fangs are longer. Yeah. And it's drops of venom. I've seen, yes. start to bite. That can kill if it was to bite somebody. Do you want touch. to touch? But I don't want to touch the head. <gasps> Let me hear. Help me the body. Oh my God, its scales it sits, are rough. It's it slimy as people think. It, it's not slimy, it's but it's rough. It's it feels scaly. It's beautiful. Look at these colors. So it's we very may, smooth underneath as well. I may put this back in the box. Right. And we take it back to the snake farm. Okay. And then I'll show you many of the snakes that we have there. Okay. okay. Putting them back what? is a nightmare. Puff adder bites account for more deaths than any other snake in East Africa. That's why Boniface wants to handle it with care. Boniface works for the Biochem Center in Watamu. It's a research center for snakes and reptiles, and it houses the largest collection of snakes in all of East Africa. I have been working at Biochem for 15 years now. Before I came to Biochem, I was working at Masai Mara in the hotel industry. When I was a small child, about six years, I remember me and my brother going out to the field. We were herding some cattle. And we, as we were playing, we found a snake. And so actually my brother found it and he said, oh, bring a stick, bring a stick. And then there, he was trying to kill it. And me, I was enthusiastic to see that snake. And then he, I said, no, don't kill it. We had a fight because I was stopping him. And he said, why? Those are devils. They need to be killed. Every time you find a snake, kill it on the head, otherwise it will bite you. So I said, no, I think they need their life. Since then, Boniface has had a lifelong passion for snakes. Being in Kenya has given him access to the other big five. The puff adder, the python, the cobra, the boomslang, and the most dangerous of all, the black mamba. One bite from this one, and you are in serious trouble. Which snake is this? That's a black mamba. Um, black mambas can grow to the size of two meters and above. They are the most venomous snake in, in the world. Actually, it's number, about number four in the world. And have you ever been bitten by a venomous snake? I've never been bitten. I'm even sweating thinking about it. Because it was so if bitten by a black mamba, time is of the essence. You could die within an hour. It's crucial you get treated with antivenom immediately. It's literally the only thing that will save you. There's a snake that you will love to see. Okay. And you will love to handle. I think this will be your favorite one. <laughs> okay. Wait, there's nothing, there's nobody home. No, the snake has escaped. You think so? There's, no, there's nobody inside. But you see there is some fight over here. There was some sitting. Can I check? Sitting. Okay, before you check, do you see the tracks? Uh, yeah, that's true, I see tracks, yes. So, below that, you can see the, the, the sand, sort of a heap of things. That's where something is. You can check if you want and pick it up. What size do you think it is if you're um, going to get it? It feels like a rock, actually, wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. It's buried, it's a... Wow. Nice. Check it out. Oh. Look wow. at that. A sand snake. Not a sand snake, but it lives in the sand. 
a sand living, a sand dwelling sand boa. snake, a sand boa, beautiful. I've heard that uh, these snakes are also very popular in the pet trade. Yeah. And that's one of the problems that people try to steal them from Kenya. She is quite lovely. Look at that tongue, tiny eyes. It's amazing that she can even see anything. You know, snakes have very poor eyesight. And also, if it's not actually seeing, you see it takes out its tongue and gets the information. So that means, you see the tongue is forked. Right. Every fork gets the scented particles. So it's smelling with its tongue, basically. Yeah. Boniface, she's my favorite so far. Snakes find their prey by flicking their tongues and tasting particles from the air. Their forked tongues allow them to tell which direction the prey has gone. This is all possible because of an amazing patch of sensory cells in the roof of their mouth called the Jacobson's organ. Next, Boniface wants to milk the venom from a black mamba to create antivenom. It all sounded fine until he told me that their venom is so strong it could kill an elephant. Boniface wants to show me how they milk venom from a black mamba. It's a two-person job, so he gets his boss, Royan Taylor, to help. My goodness, that is massive. So as you can see, they're really, they're really big snakes. Just couldn't you have you? Just gonna try and turn it down. Okay, I'm gonna stand. Uh, oh my god. So, so I'll right push you couple. Okay, so they're really big, powerful snakes. What we do is we just get it to, to bite the glass. And then we just very gently, not hard, just very gently give it a... And so you can see on the tip of the thing there, there's, there's a tiny amount of very clear venom that has just come off that. Does it hurt him to be milked? No, if you do it correctly, it doesn't. Um, I don't think he likes it particularly, he'd rather, rather not. But um, in order to make anti-venom, you, you need to get venom from the species that you need. So. One of the biggest problems we have in sub-Saharan Africa now is because of a shortage of antivenom, we have a lot of antivenom being made in places like India, and you can make antivenom anywhere in the world. That's not the problem. The problem is you have to use venom from the area of this that you wish to, you, to treat. So, so, so if you had uh, venom from a black mamba from West Africa, it wouldn't necessarily work? Well, not very always. Well, some, yeah. some species, the venom is actually not very different, but in others, population-wise, you can find a huge difference regionally in, the, in their venom within the same species. Even though I know that Royan and Boniface are experts, I can't help but feel scared thinking that this snake might make a sudden move and bite me. Would you like to hold it? Um. I'll keep the sharp end, so, but if you here, if you take Bonnie's end, you'll get a feel of the strength of this, of this animal. Oh my God, this is amazing. It is so strong. Oh my, I hope he's not looking at me. He doesn't remember me. Yeah, so where their strength is for speed, they are really very, very fast snakes. So in the wild, you've got to be really organized to try and catch one. Otherwise, before you know it, it's gone and shot in a hole. So they make terrible stories in movies and things, but in reality, they will always run away from you. We get very few bites because they they run. People oh, who get into hear. trouble is because they were trying to kill it. And as you can see, a big snake like this gets in your kitchen. Mm -hmm. You think you're going to kill it with a broom, you're more likely going to get yourself into a lot of trouble. Bioken has a vast number of poisonous snakes from which they collect venom to create anti-venom. But in this part of Kenya, many people don't even know that anti-venom exists. Bonnie, <laughs> take away. back your friend. <laughs> That was amazing. I'll put it back. Wow. Ooh. That snake had fangs that were tiny, like minute little syringes. 
and the amount of venom that came out of it, minute, tiny, tiny, tiny amount. This is enough to kill an elephant. And what do people traditionally do if, you know, in places where they've never heard of anti-venom, what do they normally do? Uh, they go to the local mgangas, they die, if there's no anti-venom. But as now we're passing the message to many people, we have put posters everywhere in hospitals. We're trying to educate more people, and more especially schools who come in, we give them uh, a way forward that if you see any snake bite, hospital is the best idea. Persuading people here that antivenom is the best way to save a life has not been easy. Over a thousand people die each year in Kenya from the snake bites. But things are starting to change. Boniface takes me to meet Menza a young man who nearly died after being bitten by a black mamba. Thankfully, his father was there to help. Menza's father told me that the first thing he did was to apply a black stone to the bite. All over the world, people believe that black stones can draw poison from a snake bite. Although there is no proof that this has any effect, when people believe it does, it keeps them calm. And this is crucial, because when a patient panics, their heartbeat increases, and this puts them in even greater danger. But Menza's dad also did the right thing by taking him straight to the hospital. This is the most important thing to do first, as time is of the essence. More and more people are starting to get in touch with Biochem for help with snakes. Almost every day, Boniface gets calls from people needing assistance. And today, someone calls him in distress. A snake has entered their house. Okay, copy. Let's have to finish. Yeah. To finish, boss. Do you have a Google son? Maybe with a spitting cobra. Where did she say this? So, where does that? Where do you think it could be? Um, on the. Yeah, so now we have to to look because she does. She's scared of snakes. Oh yeah, there it is. You see that? Oh. Oh my God, what is it? It's a tiger snake. Very nice tiger snake, yeah? Is that dangerous? No, it's not. So now I'm not going to use the grab six, no goggles. We just grab it by the hand, yeah? Okay. Yeah. It's not going to bite you? It can bite or not, so I don't know actually. It's gently handling. Wow. It looks like it's looking for food. Oh. Oh, look at this. Pretty, beautiful snake. So we don't have to put it in the bag. It's, this is not a venomous snake. It's not a venomous snake. This beautiful stripy snake is called the African tiger snake. It's absolutely harmless. But like many other snakes, it would probably have been killed because of people's fear that these snakes are dangerous. Getting that snake out of the house has attracted a little crowd here in this little village. This is a typical coastal village in this part of Kenya. And it's an opportunity for Boniface not only to support the community by helping them by removing these snakes from their homes, but it's also a chance to do a little bit of outreach and education and tell them that these snakes are harmless and they mustn't be killed. 
Nani iko na swali? Mhm. Oh nyoka akoma kama vile ni mkali nimesema. Tumuoe ama kama mengi kwenye nyumba tumemuona hivi. Ukimpata kwa nyumba usimuue. Nastari kutupigia simu. Tuje tumchukue. Sisi tuko karibu hapa na watu wengi wanakuja. Wanatupigia tunachukua. Na kama amekuuma, hujui kama yuko na sumu ama kwa pati mbaya amekuuma, unastari kumuona na mara moja tupigie tujue. Alafu unaenda hospitali kama iko karibu. Na huyu nyoka yuko na neno gani? Uwezi hesabu ni mingi. Tena ina line mbili kutoka juu. So ikiuma inatafuna sababu iko na sile back fangs. Good. That's great. She's not scared at all. How does it feel? It's smooth. It's smooth, huh? Yes. Is it horrible? It's very good. She no na ina shida. She can wear mukana gina apa. No no. Nice. Ina shida. Like ni ushi shike. Uki pata e pe kaya pasa. Una shika tu niki wa nipa pasa. Kwani ya nacho tiger snake. Hey, your pants. No, no, it's stripes. Stripes. Yeah. Now, yeah, rangi ni orange like this. Are we done? Yeah. Let's go take it back to the wild somewhere. He's holding me. Doesn't want me to let go. Boniface holds classes at the Snake Center as part of his continuous drive to educate people on snakes. He invited members of the community who are involved in health work. Snake bites occur regularly here, so Boniface tells them about different types of snakes and what they should and should not do. If somebody is afraid of snakes, I am actually the dawa. I know how to get rid of those fear. I will talk to the person who is who has a phobia. I tell them the story of snakes, what they are. They are animals. They have a purpose. We have a majority which are harmless. The advantage of the harmless species in the area, and the people actually now start getting into the idea. Yeah, we are in the garden farming. We get our maize uh, getting eaten by rats. So it's better we have those snakes there reducing the rats. And the deadly venomous ones, you find they're not more common to come and kill people. They don't chase people. That's what I use, the language I use, because that is the reality. And then I will tell them, do you want to get rid of your phobia? This community have spent the whole day here learning about snakes and they've lost their innate fear of snakes. And right now we're going to put that to test. We're going to introduce them to the biggest snake here at the Bioken farm. And it's one of the biggest snakes in Africa. Let's do it, Boniface. Okay. Enjoy Abatu. Can I put that here? Abatu. Wherever. So, where in the valley? Songe Abatu. In the valley. What are you? What are you? What are you? What are you? Songa Mbele, Songa Mbele. Songa Karibu Kabisa, Hapa. This snake has no venom, but it's clearly not harmless because it's a python and it's incredibly strong. It kills by constriction and you can feel it in the muscles. This is a kind of a snake that could kill small livestock, chickens, goats, sheep and other animals. So many of the members of the community have met this snake before. It's diurnal, comes out only in the daytime, so it's not one of those snakes that harasses people at night. It's also one of the snakes that is seen most often because it's in the farms, and that's why it's often persecuted and killed. And uh, it's amazing. All these people who initially were terrified of the snakes are now holding uh, the biggest snake in the entire center. How do you feel? Mapenzi? <laughs> the most amazing thing that I saw here today was that the same people who came here ready to kill the snake 20 minutes ago now don't want to let go. Thanks to the hands-on approach of centers like Biochem, we can literally save the lives of people bitten by snakes. 
and we can also begin to undo the damage caused by ignorance and myths to secure a future for the survival of snakes. If you want to help our amazing wildlife, why don't you start a Wildlife Warriors Club in your school? To learn more about this program, please visit our website, 